You guys look beautiful. You guys are shining. It's a beautiful day, isn't it? I think one of our favorite things to do is baby dedications. We've been doing these for I don't know how many how many years since we started, I guess, 10 years. And it's so cool because one of the um, kind of one of the cultural things we started was we started prophesying uh, according to the names that the parents give the babies. And it's been so cool because when Dano and Bethany were here, they said, yeah, when, you, when, you, when a parent gives a name to a child, that's an unction of the Holy Spirit, whether they know it or not. And if you look up the meanings of the names, it's pretty amazing how a person actually starts to become their name. And so we've got some amazing parents here today. Uh, Chris and Stephanie Overstreet, why don't you guys come on up with Baby Jubilee? And then um, Kat and Charlie Britannico. We've got sweet little Eleanor. We got, we got two little girls to dedicate this morning. We're super excited. Yeah, this is, this is family business. Yes, it is. And Jesus said, I'm all about my father's business. And I, I feel such a, both Ben and I feel such a weightiness when we dedicate babies we're consecrating them to the Lord. We're dedicating their lives to, to serve him, to serve his kingdom. And what a, what a powerful family here, that two families here. But I'm just, we're just so thankful for Chris and Stephanie and um, their ministry and their family. We had Brielle actually prophesying at our last prophetic booth. I, I looked over and saw her in the circle, and I had to snap a picture and text it to Chris and Stephanie because she was owning it. I mean, she's sitting there just, like, going for it. I'm like, can you – I mean, it's amazing to think that we can – we don't – there's no junior Holy Spirit. We don't have to wait till these kids are at a certain age to draw out the gifts. And, man, I'm sure people in her circle were just getting totally wrecked by the Holy yeah. Spirit. Another thing we do is, Olga will have them for you guys, is we put a scroll together. It's like a, a, a heavenly scroll, and it has a love letter from Daddy God in there. Hold that up, Olga, so people can see what that looks like. And so it just has a, a letter from Daddy God and just speaking just identity over them uh, and everything. So it's, it's just powerful. And then we have a, a piece of paper that'll, that shows what that is you know, for the kids. And also a declaration that, that we wrote out from the church <laughs> to you guys. So um, here you go, Rick. Oh, and then also mom and dad, mom and dad, some of the elders. Can you guys just kind of just come up here and just hang out down here? And just kind of just as we pray, just let's we just want to surround you guys when we do this dedication. Well, the word I, I got over Jubilee um, the meaning of her name is so powerful. It actually means a ram's horn because it signifies the year of Jubilee that God designed for the children of Israel. And I just felt that she would be a trumpet, that she would be a horn, that she would actually prophesy redemption. She would prophesy hope. She would prophesy it's a new day. I just felt like this new, this new freedom, this new life over her, and the Lord was going to use her as an oracle, going to use her prophetically to declare the coming of the Lord, to declare redemption. And then her middle name is Grace. I mean, talk about two names that carry so much power. And so, Jubilee, you are going to do amazing things for the Lord. God is going to use your mouth. as a, it's, gonna, it's like I just see her with a mouthpiece, and the Lord is going to use her to declare things. And, and I saw when she declared things, there was redemption, there was power flowing almost like electricity that will be flowing in a place when you speak, Jubilee. And so we just, we just bless that over your life, and we thank you. What your life represents, Jubilee, is so important and so powerful. Yeah, a few things I was writing down last night and this morning about Jubilee is mani uh, the mani manifestation of mercies of God. Um, that's part of the meaning of her name, but a prisoner set free. Debts, debts forgiven. Yes. The song that came to me was from Upper Rim called Desirable. This is where I belong. And I see her spending hours in the secret place abiding. Wow. Uh, the beauty of my awestruck wonders is what I heard. And she will intimately know this. Mm. Uh, Jubilee is like a dove which has built a sense 
on how to get home. Wow. There's like a homing beacon that she carries for the presence. Obviously, the presence is inside of her, and it's, it'll be like a homing beacon. Yes. Um, and the word hesed, the hesed of God, is the closest word of grace in the Old Testament. Wow. And it's actually part of the name Bethesda also. Wow. Um, but the hesed of God is everlasting. It's determined. It's unshakable. And that's who she is. Uh, the spirit of the Lord God is upon me because the Lord has anointed me to preach the good tidings of the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim the liberty to the captives. I, I, anyways, Isaiah 61.1 over her. And then I heard I, uh, Jeremiah 33.12 over her. Wow. And it says this, thus says the Lord of hosts, in this place, which is desolate, without man, without beast, and it's, and it's all its cities, there shall again be a dwelling place of shepherds causing their flocks to lie down. Wow. So you can't have shepherds and pastors without new, new life mm -hmm. and new fruit happening. Yeah. So Thank she's going to be one that brings new life and new fruit. Thank you, Lord. I totally agree. Those are such good words, and I confirm it. I'm hearing strength uh, mm. over both these dedications today. Mm -hmm. And for Jubilee, um, I heard uh, uh, the joy of the Lord is her strength. Yes. And that she's going to help many people discover the strength they have in God as she rejoices in the restoration and the fullness that is coming through her time in her life. So, Father, we just thank you for this beautiful yes, grace gift so good. in Jesus' name. Thank you, Jesus. And we've got sweet little Eleanor, Eleanor Alice. What a beautiful name. And I was looking up Eleanor's name, and it means candle of God, light of God. And it's so fitting for actually this season prophetically as our church. We did the candlelight service last week and talked about Psalm 27, 1. And I just see Eleanor being such a candle, such a light. Even if she's in dark places, she's going to bring so much light and brightness. And I, I saw her in the intimate place with God and seeking his face and getting revelation light and answers when nobody had the answer. Eleanor will have the answer. And Alice means nobility. So she is part of the royal family. Um, she will... I believe she'll have the ability to call to nobility in others. She'll speak nobility into other people. And so we just, we just thank you for this beautiful life. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Eleanor Alice, candle of God, nobility. Yeah, when I was looking up her name, <clears throat> I saw lighthearted and, and shining light, and of course, the nobility. And so uh, knowing her nobility, her identity as a daughter of the King of Kings, I just feel like she's going to be like a confident mm -hmm. earth shaker, just yep. like like Pete, just like releasing the peace of heaven wherever yes. she walks. Um, and I think there's going to be even times in even nurseries and places that she goes into where maybe the kids are just, you know, uh, crying or and she'll walk in and it'll it'll calm down. So and I, I just see that she'll just carry a peace yes. that passes understanding. Um, and. I just heard the phrase, I'm going to take her places that uh, you've only dreamed of. Like mm. maybe there's been dreams in your guys' hearts, and you're going to see a lot of those things you, um, you know, fulfilled through, through your daughter. Wow. Um, she will be my depository first and my dispensary, dispensary second. So there's going to be a great infilling in her life, and then she's going to dispense that out in just powerful ways. Uh, flooded with my presence and, and protection. And I saw fear vanishing and faith rising when she walks into yes. the rooms. And I just heard the words wonders and possibilities with wow. her. I just feel like she's just going to be one of those girls that lives in a lot of awe and wonder. And um, anything's possible. Anything's possible. Yeah, so good. Uh, and then Matthew eleven twenty eight 28 through 30 is the scripture that I have for you guys. And it's, um, it's basically uh, Jesus saying, come to me, uh, get rid of everything else that's heavy, and tap into the unforced rhythms of grace. Mm. <laughs> uh, so that's what I have Thank for your, you, your beautiful daughter. Can we have you guys all stand? We're going to pray over these babies. I just got, uh, real quick, when I saw Eleanor, I got a picture of the actual Shelby Mustang. God speaks to me in mechanics. And the thing I heard about her is that she's custom. She's one of a kind. Wow. She's super valuable. So and good. and the, the, the horsepower that came out of Eleanor was so awesome. 
that, but you couldn't necessarily see it. And so I just feel like that power of peace and everything that Ben and Tisha were talking about, that she is a one of a kind. There's nothing common about Eleanor. And for both the girls, I heard uh, Revelation 12. I saw a woman uh, clothed in brilliance of the sun, and the moon was under her feet, and she was wearing on her head a victor's crown of 12 stars. Wow. And I just feel like God is restoring women into their yeah. rightful place yeah. in the kingdom. Wow. And these girls are going to have a big word. place in that. So, Father, word. we just seal them with a full inheritance yes. of heaven you, in Lord. Jesus' name. Wow. Thank you, Jesus. Yeah, so we just dedicate Jubilee, and we dedicate Eleanor to you. Mm. Thank you, Lord, that they'll be ones that hear your voice yes. and, and hear your words. Thank you that you've given them ears to hear. Yes. Thank you that you've given them eyes thank to you, see. Jesus. Thank you that you've given them a mouth to speak. And I just thank you, just like John the Baptist, that you've filled them with the Holy Spirit, that these will be such powerful, powerful wonder workers. Mm. So we dedicate them to you, Jesus. Yes. In the, we dedicate them to you, Father. We dedicate them to you, Holy Spirit. And we just put a circle of your blood around them all yes. the days of their lives. Yes. And we, everybody. We thank you that you've chosen these parents for these yes. girls. <laughs> yes. Specifically, you've yes. chosen these mothers and yes. fathers. You've entrusted these babies, these girls to these mm -hmm. homes, these parents. And we not only dedicate these babies, but we anoint the parents. We thank you, Lord, that they are the ones you've chosen, and, you, and they know exactly what to do. <laughs> we yeah. thank you, Jesus. You are so good. We dedicate them for your glory and your kingdom. Yeah. In the mighty name of Jesus, amen. 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 Shout them down, you guys. Woo! Let's celebrate these little guys. So I have the privilege of bringing up our speaker <laughs> today. He, he was just up here. <laughs> we'll bring him back up. Um, so many of you would agree that Kyle is just a man of peace. He's a man that carries the presence of the Holy Spirit. Um, I've had the privilege of knowing him for since we started Bethesda, actually, and 2013, and this is a man of integrity. This is a man who walks by the Spirit. He knows how to get drunk on the love of Jesus. And so I would you just, just give him the honor that he's due today. Yeah. Thank you. I told Donnie when I was up here, I was like, I want the barrel. I want the wine barrel. Though I actually think it might be a whiskey barrel. But even better, right? And I approve. Let's go. All right. So I'm going to try to knock this out. In my practicing, I kept being like, oh, my gosh, I got to trim this message down. Oh, my gosh. Um, so who here, I'm going to start with this question, has ever been in a season where it's God reveals something to you and then you can't move on for that place for like months? Yeah. You ever had that? Like you're just stuck there. Yeah. It could be like, you know, the Lord's like, you're in worship, you're in prayer, and the Lord's like, I want you to surrender. And you're like, oh, yes. You get this revelation on surrender, and so you're surrendering stuff to the Lord. And the next day, same thing. He's like, I want you to surrender. And you're like, Okay, I did that yesterday, but okay, yes, we're going to, you know, we're going to surrender more. There's more to this. And the next day it's surrender. And the next day, until you get to a point, you're like, do I even know what surrender means? <laughs> Why does he keep saying this? I think I'm doing it, you know, and, and you're just in this place for months. And so I have been in this season for months, not with <laughs> surrender. Hallelujah, it's not surrender. Uh, no. <laughs> now go watch the next season, it's going to be surrender. I'm going to be like, Why? Why did I mock it on stage? Um, I have been in this season since, since August. I have been in this season um, where I was, I was in worship, and the person leading worship started talking about El Elyon. It means God Most High. 
I was like, oh, there's some weight on that. There's some glory. And then and I found myself the next day in prayer and in worship, and the Lord was like, hey, let's, let's talk about my names. And I was like, oh, you have more? You know, <laughs> like you, have, you have more names? What, what names? What are you talking about? I got Father, Son, Holy Spirit. I'm good, right? That's, all, that's what we need. And, and it's been this journey of, of diving in to the names of God because he wants to be known, right? There are, um, it's, been, it's been months. I mean, in August, however many months that is. And I think it's been so long because there's so many names. He has a lot of names, y'all. There's this one website I've been using, uh, and it, has, it lists out the names and titles of God. There's 952 names and titles of God. That's like more than two and a half years, every single day, a new name to meditate and pray on to and pray into and, and engage and encounter and experience. And so I've been there. <laughs> I'm going through. I'm just like, all right, Lord, you got a lot of these names. Uh, but it's been good. It's, it's been fun. And so this morning, we're going to go through some names of God. And, and my, my heart for this morning, I'm, I'm going to be preaching a little different. Today's going to be a little different than my normal. Kyle sits up here and just drops bombs on y'all, and y'all are all like, whoa, you know, in the glory. You're still going to be whoa in the glory, but it's going to be a little more activation, a little more participation on your part. Because my heart, my heart is that you would leave this place having encountered one of these names of God that we're going to talk about this morning. My heart is that I don't want to see you leave this place without encountering an aspect or a characteristic of God that we're going to talk about this morning. Because his names are, are powerful and they're wonderful, but they're meant to be encountered. His, he's a relationship. Christianity is about a relationship, right? It's not about a, a rule book. It's not about things we have to keep. It's, it's about encounter. It's about encountering the living God because that's what he wants. He wants relationship with us. So we are going to dive into some names of God. Now, first, I want to start off. Isaiah 62.6 says, I have set watchmen upon your walls, O Jerusalem, who will never hold their peace day or night. You are his servants, and by your prayers put the Lord in remembrance of his promises. Keep no silence. Give him no rest until he establishes Jerusalem and makes her a praise in the earth. Another translation puts it this way. It says, Jerusalem, I have stationed intercessors on your walls who will never be silent day or night. You reminders of Yahweh... Take no rest and tirelessly give God no rest until he firmly establishes Jerusalem and makes her the praise of all the earth. Now, one of the things I love about this is that it's actually God speaking through Isaiah. So God is saying, hey, remind me who I am. When you're on the walls, when you're praying day and night, remind me. Give me no rest. Tirelessly remind me who I am. Now, that could lead to the question, does God have a memory problem? You know, God's not up there being like, well, shoot, man, gum, I don't remember who I am today. Oh, my gosh, what am I going to do? No, he knows exactly who he is. So why are we to remind him of who he is? I'm going to give you a hint. Anthony hit on it last week with his offering. It's not for his benefit. It's for ours. It's so that we remember who he is. So that we know, because all of a sudden when I remember Oh, wait, you are Jehovah Rapha. You are the God who heals, and I need healing. Well, that's who you are. And suddenly he sees, oh, you believe. You know who I am. Faith is supplied, and we see healings take place, right? It's, it's for us. So much of it is for us, right? And that was Israel's problem. They continually forgot who God was and what he had done. They get themselves in trouble. God saves them. And they're like, oh, yeah, we love you. And then they forget, and they go in this cycle over and over and over again. So... We don't want to forget. It is important to know who God is. So the first name, I already mentioned it, is El Elyon. El Elyon means God Most High. The first time we see it is in Genesis 22, and it's with Melchizedek. When Abraham and Melchizedek are, are, are together. And it says, Melchizedek, oh, where is it? Melchizedek, king of Salam, brought out bread and wine. He was the priest of El Elyon, which in the Amplified breaks down more of the supreme ruler of the universe. His dominion is all-encompassing and everlasting. El Elyon, that's a good name right there, y'all. God most high. 
God most high. This is, this is the God that we are singing to this morning. That is worthy of all adoration and praise because he is the creator of all things, the sustainer of all things. In him we move and breathe and have our being. He holds all things together. The heavens are contained within him. He is El Elyon. He is God most high. There is no other like him. This is, this is the God who says, I am the Lord your God who brought you out of Egypt. You shall have no other gods before me. This is the God in Isaiah who says, I am the Lord there is no other. There is no God but me. This is El El Yon. And now it is so easy in our day to create idols, right? They, Israelites had a problem with it. We still have a problem with it, y'all. <laughs> we have not changed that drastically in the two, three, however long we've been on this planet, right? We have not changed. We still have problems with idols, even in the church, right? And it's so easy. Sometimes we don't even think it. We're like, no, Lord, you are the ruler of my life. You have access to everything. It's all, it's all me. And he's like, Okay, can you give to that family? Well, mm, have you seen my bank account, Lord? I don't know if I can do that. And all of a sudden, money has a place that God should have. Ooh. Ooh. But he is El El Yon. He is God most high. Whether, whether you want it or not, he's ruling over every aspect of your life. You can't help it. <laughs> That is who he is. And so for this first thing, there's, with every name, I'm going to have a little activation, okay? So for this first one, I want everyone engaged with this because I think we all, to a degree, deal with it. So I want you all to stand. We're all going to stand. And this is going to be a little prophetic act, okay? So in the, in the Old Testament, you read every time there is these idols to Baal or uh, Ishtar or Dagon or, or whoever, they would tear it down, right? They'd knock it over. They knock it over. And now we have so many, right? There's, there isn't just money that can be an idol. We can have politics that's an idol, celebrities that are an idol, um, our race and nationality and creed. All that, all those things can take the place of where God's supposed to be, right? So this is what I want to do. We're just going to do a simple prophetic act, and you're just going to knock it over. <laughs> knock over any idols. Come on, I see some of y'all. Your hands aren't moving, man. Don't keep God right there. Knock over that idol. Let's go. <laughs> Come on. He is El El Yon. He is God Most High. So, God, we thank you. Let's just lift up a shout to God real quick. We thank you, God. You are El Elyon. You are God most high. You sit on the thrones. You sit in the heavens and laugh at the plans of the enemy. We thank you, God, that you are the creator of all things. Amen. You can be seated. Next name. This name might be our favorite because we're charismatics. It's Jehovah Rapha. Right? We love Jehovah Rapha. I thought I'd get more out of that one. Come on, it's the Lord that heal, heals. We love healing. I grew up, I grew up Presbyterian. We didn't do no healing, okay? We didn't do that. It just wasn't part of our, our thing. God, God wasn't still moving like we believe he is today. Um, Jehovah Rapha. So the first time we see Jehovah Rapha is Exodus 15. And the, the Israelites have, are wandering in the desert. And they come to a spring, and the water's bitter. They can't drink it. So God instructs Moses to throw a piece of wood into the water. The water becomes cleansed, because that makes sense. And it's, it's El Elyon. He can do what he wants. And, <laughs> uh, and, so, and then God declares. This is what he says. He says, if you listen carefully to the Lord your God and do what is right in your eyes, if you pay attention to his commands and keep all his decrees, I will not bring on you any of the diseases I brought on the Egyptians, for I am the Lord who heals you. First time he ever says, I am the Lord who heals you. I am Jehovah Rapha. He is the Lord who heals. And we see, I mean, tirelessly throughout the whole Bible, Old Testament, New Testament, we see the Lord heal, right? You can camp forever just talking about the healings of Elisha and Elijah and just, man, healing after healing after healing. And then obviously you get into the New Testament and there's this guy named Jesus. Don't know if you've heard of him. And he healed every single person that came to him. Every single one. He batted a thousand. Man, I'm not batting a thousand. Jesus, come on. Uh, <laughs> he, he healed everyone. Because he's Jehovah Rapha. That's who he is. He can't help but bring healing. How many in here, we have, we have really bad theology in the church when it comes to healing. Just, just truthful. 
We do. You have the camp that doesn't believe, that doesn't believe that God still heals. And you have, you have the camp that God caused the sickness, yeah. right? He's bringing the disease and the suffering and, and it's judgment or whatever. He's teaching you a lesson. How many parents do I have in here? Raise your hand. If you're a parent, don't you just love it when your kid's sick or hurt, <laughs> broke their arm, finally broke their arm. Little punk's going to learn a lesson now. <laughs> no. We don't like that. So how much greater of a parent is God? Yeah. Do you think he's up there being like, oh, yeah, I'm going to teach you a lesson. I can't wait for my child to get sick. Yes. Can't wait for them to learn this. No. We know from the scriptures, we know from the gospels that the, the enemy comes to kill, steal, and destroy. But Jesus came to bring life and life more abundant. Right? By his stripes we are healed. Yes. Amen. So this is what we're going we're gonna to do real quick. If you need healing in your body... And you can stand. I want you to stand. If you can't stand, just raise your arm up. If you need healing. Let's go. Everyone that's down, put your hands around these people. Come on. Let's lay hands real quick. We are literally going to take just like 10, 15 seconds because I got more names to get through. God, we thank you that you are Jehovah Rapha. You are the God who heals, that you have revealed yourself as a healer, that it is in your nature. And so right now, we just release, oh, Jehovah Rapha, over these individuals, we thank you, Lord, that by your stripes we are healed. The healing has been bought and paid for. So we just command these bodies to come into alignment with the kingdom of heaven. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. If you felt any shift, wave your hand at me or come talk after church or, or whatever because I want to hear some testimonies. So next name. We're flying through this, guys. Oh. Oh, this is a fun one. You all ready? Jehovah Raha. <laughs> Jehovah Raha, the Lord is my shepherd. Amen. Psalm 23, right? The Lord, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lay down in green pastures. He leads me to the still waters. All right? We know, we know of a shepherd. We know that, that he's protecting, he's caring, he's loving. He protects the sheep from harm. He goes and chases us down when we wander off. He's the good shepherd. Jesus says, and, and John, he says, you know, I am, I am the shepherd. I am the good shepherd. And I'll lay down my life for my sheep. The hired hand won't. When the wolf comes, the hired hands, he's splitting. He doesn't care. But I love my sheep. So I would lay down my life. I'm a good shepherd. And then in five chapters later, he says this. He says, there's no greater love than this that if you would lay down your life for a friend. Just like the shepherd would lay down his life, he says, there's no greater love than this, that you would lay down your life for a friend. And by the way, I call you friends. No longer are you servants, you're my friends. You wanna know something really cool about the word raha? Another definition of it is friend. The Lord, my friend. Mm. Mm. He is a shepherd and he is my friend. So here's the activation on this one. This is, you know, Donnie started off getting a little vulnerable. We're going we're gonna to keep in that little track today, just tap into vulnerability. If you feel you need a friend, you haven't experienced Jesus as the Lord, my friend. I want you to stand. Let's go. Thank you. Come on. The Lord, my friend. Thank you. Can we just get a couple people just to lay hands on him real quick? Yes, Lord. We thank you, God, that you are Jehovah Raha, that you are the Lord is my shepherd and the Lord is my friend, and we thank you that you are a friend to every person in this room, but particularly right now to this gentleman, Lord, that you are his friend, that he has seen, that he has known, that he has valued, that he has cared for, that he has loved, that even if he wanders off the path, you guide him back, you protect him. We thank you that you laid down your life for this individual and for everyone in this room. We thank you, God, that you are Jehovah Raha. Amen. Another one that our, us charismatics love, Jehovah Jireh. Let's go. Come on. Thank you, Maverick City, for bringing that word to all of us so we can know it more. Because I guarantee you, some of you didn't know that before that song came out. The Lord will provide. So the first time we see this is Genesis 22. 
right? Abraham's up on the mountain getting ready to sacrifice to Isaac. The Lord provides a ram. Abraham's like, hallelujah, thank you, Jesus. The Lord will provide. He calls the place the Lord will provide. Mm. It's part of his nature. And we see confirmed again throughout the Gospels of the Lord continually pro- providing, bringing provision to those in need. We see it in with, with Jesus, right? Jesus says, look, God feeds the birds. He clothes the flowers. How much more does he care about you? I got news for you. If you didn't know, you're worth more than birds and flowers, okay? Despite what Peter says. I don't know if I can say that on the microphone. <laughs> you are worth more, all right? Y'all are worth more. I'm from the South, y'all, all right? I'm from the South. <laughs> oh, um, he is the God who provides. He's a good father. And he wants you to be blessed. We, we, we have this hesitation when it comes to the word, like, prosper and prosperity, right? Because we're like, oh, that's the prosperity gospel. And we immediately think of the televangelist on the TV that stole our all money, right? It's immediately what we think of. It's what I think of, okay? I'm like, oh, man. But no, the Lord wants you to prosper. He wants to bless you. He wants finances and resources and provisions flowing through you so that you can be, bring provision and be a resource and bring finances to, to others. It literally says, Paul says in um, Corinthians how, how us giving actually causes praise to come to God. Us giving causes others to praise God's name. And so he wants you to be blessed so that you can bless others so that they can bring more glory to him. Okay? We also, we have this, this idea that Jesus was poor. It's nowhere in the scriptures that Jesus was poor. I'm sorry. I'm going to pop a bubble right there. Nowhere. The reason he was born in a manger is because there was no room in the inn. Not because they couldn't afford it. Right? We like to say, oh, he was born in the manger. They were so poor. No. You read the story, all the inns were full. They couldn't go anywhere. They didn't have anywhere to go. Did you know that when, when Jesus died on the cross, it says the Romans were fighting over his clothes. I'm pretty sure it had to be pretty expensive clothes. It wasn't just some plain tunic. They're like, I want this plain cloth. No. It was expensive clothing that he was wearing, and they were fighting over it. He had a treasurer. I'm my own treasurer, guys. I don't have enough money to hire a treasurer to go around me and manage my money. He had a treasurer. And he also had, there's, there's a scripture that talks about these people that gave and funded his, his ministry. And one of them, her name is Joanna, the wife of Chusa. And Chusa was the manager of Herod's household. So the manager of Herod's household, his wife is a follower of Jesus. And is taking all that money and is funneling it to Jesus. He had money. He prospered so that he could bring prosperity to others. Okay? So if you're in here and you need provision. I want you to stand. You need provision. Whether that's debts paid off, you need a new car, you need resources. It doesn't even just have to be money, any type of resources. I want you to stand, okay? And then I want you to get out your wallet and I want you to give to me. No, no, no. I'm kidding. Don't, don't do that. Uh, uh, God, we thank you that you are Jehovah Jireh. We thank you that you are the God who provides. The Lord will provide. We thank you, Lord, that you want to bless us and bring us into prosperity so that we can bring blessings to your name and to help others, Lord. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Oh, man. Oh, man. Oh, man. I'm going to do this one probably really fast or the next one really fast because I don't want to get to my grand finale name. Okay. There's a grand finale, y'all. There's a grand finale. The next name I want to hit is Jehovah Shalom, God of peace, All right, Lord of peace. First time we see it is in, in Judges 9, or in Judges 6, sorry, 24, and it's Gideon. Gideon's in, in the wine press because he's scared, and uh, he, doesn't want, he doesn't want the uh, Midianites to come and take his, his grain that he's working on, and uh, the angel of the Lord, it says that the angel of the Lord came and sat under an oak tree. And then Gideon sees him and, like, goes to him, and he's like, hey, what you doing? Like, can you just imagine? You're just like, where did that guy come from under the oak tree? I'm going to go find out, you know? And he, um, and so the, the angel of the Lord, you know, he speaks to him, says, you are a man of great valley. The Lord's going to do this. You're going to rise up. He's going to chase out the Midianites. You guys are going to be free. And so, the, so uh, Gideon says, um, or no, the angel says, peace be to you. Do not fear. You shall not die. And Joshua built an altar and called it, the Lord is peace. 
the Lord is bringing peace to the situation. He got the word from the Lord that, hey, I'm going to do this through you. So he says, okay, there's going to be peace. You are the Lord. The Lord is peace. So even in the midst of, of the chaos and the storms and the battles going on and the suffering, the Lord's saying, no, I'm, I'm bringing peace to this. Right? We see in the, in the, the gospel, right, one of the, the stories of Jesus calming the storm. To me, though, the piece of the example of him being Jehovah Shalom was the fact that he was sleeping in the storm. Right. He wasn't afraid. He had peace. So we're going to do this real quick. If you feel, I'm not going to camp on one of these because I want to get through. If you feel that you're, you're li- your life right now, you just feel it's stormy. There's the storms going on. You don't have peace, and you need peace. I want you to stand. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, Lord, we thank you, God, that you are Jehovah Shalom. The Lord is peace. And we release that peace right now over these individuals. We thank you, Jesus, that you are the Prince of Peace, and that you reside within us. And so, Lord, right now, would you just bring peace, peace to their storms? Even that, even if the storms don't come, give them peace to sleep in the boat. That they would encounter right now that they were encountering Jehovah Shalom, the Lord is peace. Amen. Okay. The next name I want to hit, this one's been the last couple weeks, this one's been wrecking me, is El Roy. El Roy. The Lord who sees. The Lord who sees. We, we first, we find it in Genesis 16, uh, and it's Hagar. Right? She's, she's uh, left. She's run off to the wilderness because Sarah's been mistreating her. She's not putting up with her any, anymore, so she runs. And she's in the wilderness, and she comes to this spring, and the angel of the Lord appears to her. And he's like, hey, what are you doing? And she's like, I'm running away from Sarah. She's mean. And, <laughs> and, <laughs> and, uh, and the Lord says, no, you're going to go back. You're going to have a baby. The baby is going to be blessed. It's going to have a multitude. You know, it's, it's going to be numbered as the stars, just as, as Isaac received that blessing. It's a blessing that was to Abraham's children. And this is her response. She says, so she called the name of the Lord who spoke to her. You are a God of seeing. For she said, have I not even here in the wilderness looked upon him who sees me? Or have I also seen the future purposes or designs of him who sees me? Therefore, the well was called Bier Laha Roy, a well to the living one who sees me. A well to the living one who sees me. He's the God who sees. Even in the midst of your wilderness seasons where you're questioning God, do you, do you even care? Are you there? Are you with me? I feel abandoned. I feel unknown. What's going on? He says, no, I'm El Roy. I'm the God who sees I see you. And so right now, I want you to stand. If you feel like you are unseen, if you do not feel, you feel unknown, you feel abandoned, you feel like God doesn't see me, I don't know what's going on in life, I want you to stand. We're getting vulnerable, y'all. Come on. Thank you, Jesus. Let's go. God, we thank you that you are El Roy. That you are the God who sees. That you see the needs of these individuals. You see, you see the journeys that they are on right now, whether they are in the wilderness, whether they're in a storm. You see them. You know them. You hear them. And you will meet their needs because you're Jehovah Jireh. So, Lord, we thank you that they are seen. We thank you that they are known by the God who created everything. In Jesus' name, amen. Now... For the grand finale, are you all okay holding on for just like five, ten minutes? And there, yeah, we, you want to keep going? We can keep going, y'all. Each one of these names could have been like a month series, okay? And I'm like, and I had to pick and choose. You know how hard that is? Golly, there's so many names. I'm like, oh, I want to talk about this one. No, I don't have time to talk about that one. Um, okay, now this name, in my opinion, it's become my favorite name. It's, it's my favorite name. It's, it's the one that even in the times where I'm in prayer and, and worship and, and I'm, I'm meditating on the names, you know, from, from Elohim to Adonai to Elohim to Jehovah Rapha, Jehovah Raha to Jehovah Shalom, Jehovah Shema, 
um, El Shaddai, the King of Kings, the Prince of Peace, the Alpha and Omega, the Bright and Morning Star, the Only Begotten Son. As I'm meditating on all these different names, all these different titles and characteristics and attributes of God, every single time, without fail, he brings me back to this one. It always ends with this one. Who wants to take a guess? <laughs> Jesus. I knew someone was going to be like, Jesus. I'm like, no, that's a good one, but that's not it. That's not it. <laughs> the one time Jesus isn't the right answer. <laughs> Emmanuel. God with us. Emmanuel. This is the name that changes everything. Everything. No longer is he this far off distant being. That created. He isn't out in the like Andromeda galaxy sipping a mimosa. Like, I wonder what's going on with my creation back over there. No. He's suddenly personal. He's drawn in. He's God with us. With us. It changes everything. Everything. Because you look, at, you look at, our, at, at creation. You look at God. God creates everything. Creates humanity. Adam and Eve dropped the ball. And, and, and suddenly we're thrown into chaos, right? We're thrown into, to, you know, sin enters the world. Uh, it takes root in the hearts of man. We're suddenly living from this, this disease, right, that's taken upside on the inside, this disease that's, that's rotting away at us. We've entered into this false reality, this disillusionment. And God continually always pursues, Right? It's man that pulls away. Immediately, Adam and Eve, when they sinned, they felt a separation. They said, oh my gosh, we are separated from God. And they hide. And God comes searching for them. God didn't feel the separation. Man felt the separation. Humanity felt the separation. And we see it throughout Israel's history. We see God pursue Israel. Israel withdraws. God pursues Israel. Israel withdraws. God pursues Israel time and time again throughout their whole history. That's, that's the cycle. It's this one big circle because God had made a covenant with them, and they couldn't uphold it, and they realized that. They realized every time he drew in close, it wasn't this, oh, I want to rebel. It was, oh, my gosh, we can't uphold this. I can't stand in this presence. I can't stand in this love. I'm not worthy of it. I need to get going. I can't stay here. I'm going to go over here. Because this fake God over here doesn't, I don't feel that condemnation like I did when I was in the presence. And so they continually withdraw, and God continually pursues. Paul tells us in, in Colossians that we are enemies of God in our own mind. He was never our enemy. He was always for us. And so what is, his, what is his response? St. Athanasius says, what then, if God being good, was he to do when he sees his creation heading towards ruin? But to enter into it, to become it, to become Emmanuel, God with us. He says, you can't uphold the covenant that I made with you. So guess what? I'll, I'll come do it. I'll take on flesh. I'll step onto your side of the bargain and I'm going to fulfill this for you because I'm tired of doing this circle and I want you. And I'm going to, not only am I just going to fulfill that covenant, I'm going to kill that disease in you. No longer will you be subjected to the lie that we are separate. No longer will you be subjected to the lie that I am your enemy. No longer will you be subjected to the lie that I am not for you, that I am not with you. You are going to behold me in the flesh. You will behold all my glory and I will be with you. And so he becomes Emmanuel. Mm. St. Athanasius, he continued, and he says, It was impossible, therefore, that God should leave man to be carried off by corruption, because it would be unfitting and unworthy of himself. Because he is El Elyon. 
because he's the God most high, he wouldn't abandon his creation because he's the good shepherd. He's my friend. He would lay down his life. He's not going to abandon his creation. He is Jehovah Rapha, the Lord who heals. How could he not come in and heal the disease within us? How could he not be Jehovah Jireh and provide a way? He is Emmanuel, God with us. God with us through every trial and circumstance that we face in life. Donnie hit on it this morning when he read Hebrews. We have a high priest who is able to sympathize with us because he's been tempted in every way. He understands. He gets it. Sometimes it's hard to be like, I don't think you get it. And he's like, no, I'm El Roy. I see. I'm here right now in your midst. I get you. I'm Emmanuel. It changed everything when he took on that name. Every other religion, you look at it, right? Their gods are all dead. Their gods never dwelt among them. Do you know that it is a human being who is sitting on the throne in heaven? Colossians, hold on, hold on, hold on. Paul, was, oh no, that's John, that's not what I wanted. Paul was jacked up, y'all. Paul, Paul says some stuff. The one thing I love about Paul, well, one thing I love about Peter is like in the end of First Peter, Paul, or Peter literally says like, hey, those things that Paul's teaching, I know they're hard to understand. Just trust the man, go with it, okay? Grow in grace. Listen to Paul. Um, Here we go. For in him, talking about Jesus, the whole fullness of the deity, the Godhead, continues to dwell in bodily form. So right now, humanity is interwoven into the Trinity, sitting on the, on the throne in heaven. El Elyon has a human body right now, y'all. And you are in him. Made full and having come to the fullness of life in Christ, you too are filled with the Godhead, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. He is Emmanuel. He is God with us. And that doesn't mean that he's just right next to us. It means that he is with us. He is in us. He is within us. You cannot separate yourself from God any longer. You have become one. You are in perfect union with the God that created the cosmos. You are in perfect union with Jehovah Jireh, with El Shaddai. You are in perfect union with Adonai and Elohim. You are in perfect union. Whew. Suddenly brightens my day, right? <laughs> Suddenly I got some good news. I can't be separated from God. He paid a really high price to be one with you. Hmm. The last thing, last thing I'm going to read is, is from John. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God himself. He was present originally with God, and all things were made and came into existence through him. And without him was not even one thing made that has become into being. In him was life and the light, and the life was the light of men. And then it continues on, and it says, The Word became flesh and tabernacled among us. And we actually saw his glory, such glory as only the begotten son receives from his father, full of grace and truth. He took on flesh. He became Emmanuel with us. That word flesh is, is the word sarx in the Greek. And it's the same word that Paul uses when describing the sinful nature. He stepped in to our disease. He stepped in to our alienation. He stepped in to sin so that he could kill it, so he could get up on the cross and kill it. And it raised forth a new creation Without blemish. Hmm. He says that, that even the darkness is as light to him. He is Emmanuel, God with us. And so this is what I want to end. If you, this is actually everyone's going to stand. Everyone needs more Emmanuel in their life. Everyone needs more Emmanuel. Oh. Just get into receiving mode real, real quick. Get in, however you receive. I'm not sitting down. <laughs> we're, we're standing right now. 
Emmanuel, God with us. We thank you that that is your name, that you are Emmanuel, God with us. It is not Emmanuel, God far away, Emmanuel, God over there. It is Emmanuel, God with us. That you have not abandoned us to ruin, that you stepped in, you stepped into our disease, you stepped into our pain, into our suffering, so that you could bring us the true reality that you are with us. Never separated, never far off, always right there. And so God, I just pray, I pray today, I pray that as we go forth, that we would just have encounters, not just with Emmanuel, not just with God with us, but with every name and characteristic and title that you hold, that we would create a hunger, that we would dive in, because you want to be known, and we want to know you. And so, Lord, would you reveal yourself to us? Would you reveal all the names and titles to us so that we know who you are in every situation, in every circumstance?